Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. Where there are Sasquatch sightings, that's where we're gonna go. With so many chilling encounters, just waiting to be retold. So join us here in the spooky woods for the Duke Chat Show. Once again, and this time we have with us the amazing, fabulous, and bandana-tacular Bigfoot Michigan Rob, who has just got himself finally turned out a, a book, which is a compilation of a whole bunch of true life cryptid stories. None of this stuff is manufactured, made up, or otherwise fabricated. It is all 100% real stories that really happen to people. And so we're going to talk a little bit about his book and other updates on general stuff that's been going on. And so with that, excuse me, welcome to the show, Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Well, thank you, Duke. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I'm honored always to be on Rural Bigfoot Radio. And thanks to everybody tuning on in. Love each and every single one of you. And again, Duke, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, it's been quite the journey to get to this level. And I, I never thought I'd get this far with, Bigfoot, right? And uh, so I do appreciate you having me on once again, my friend. Well, you're one of one of the up and comers, as far as I'm concerned. You take your uh, your channel very seriously. You do the best job that you possibly can with it. You're always trying to make it better, and you've got enough people that are sending you stories and information and stuff now that you can actually cobble together a book with some of this stuff for everybody else to you know check out. When their uh, their computers broke, their radios dead. They've got no communication with the outside world yeah. whatsoever. They can whip out their little book of BMR stories. They can imagine your voice and they can read them, and <laughs> it'll get them through that really hard jonesing time when all their electronic equipment's broken down and they can't watch your show. You know, and it, and what you just made mention of is a, a great way to put it because yes, I mean I do it live on air. I drop videos. I have my two live shows every week and. And, you know, and the thing for me, Duke, too, you know, I, I wrote a book when I was 27 years old. And it was about a vampire named Gabriella in the Pacific Northwest. And now it has nothing to do with uh, the other uh, uh, book that we're talking about. And what was it? Uh, you know, with the, they made a great uh, with the Robert Pattinson. And, yeah, you know, my book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I exactly. can't think of what. Wasn't that like I, some kind of a teeny bopper love yeah, story no, thing? It was. Or, and here's the thing. And all man, the vampires was, like sparkled like somebody yeah. had sprinkled sugar on them yeah, or something. I, yeah, they did. And I can't recall, just like you, because I was Wasn't it fan. like Twilight or something? Or Twilight, Twilight. Twilight. Twilight, that was Twilight, it. Twilight, yeah. So I no kidding, Duke. In uh, about I was about 26, 27. And this is when the computer was like a, a mainframe box and <laughs> and I knew nothing about the computer, but I started penning a book about, because I am a big vampire fan. So I'm writing this book, and it was about Gabriella, vampire, Pacific Northwest, and her lair was underneath the beach in the Northwest, and I believe it was Washington State. And again, Twilight, it's not Twilight, that's what Twilight has, but this is well before that ever came out. So anyway, Duke, long story short, I penned this book, very proud of it. Lightning storm comes in, and good old BMR is at the keyboard, and good old BMR oh, God. did not know how to save or back up anything. Or I had, I had <laughs> 327 pages, pages, chapter oh, 29, and I lost the entire manuscript. Never to be recovered. Mm -hmm. And I was like. So disgusted. 
that ended my book career because I never went back because of my you know own ignorance, not knowing what what it was all about. And that was like 27 years old. So that's the first. So that was the my first attempt at a book. So now again, fast forward it now to 2023, and it's a lot of people know that. Really, when I came up with the writing of this book, it goes really twofold. Everyone knows in 2018, June 15th of 2018, I had a traumatic, for me, Bigfoot encounter. Two months later, Cindy, my girlfriend, passed away. Yada, yada. Y'all know the story. I'm not going to get into that. Y'all know it. I start the channel, Bigfoot Michigan Rob. And so, you know, I'm doing my thing, brunch with Bigfoot Rob. Then I start Beyond BMR. And so, and then I, and then my um, about page on my YouTube channel said, hey, if you have an encounter story, please send them on in. So this is, and I was collecting stories for a year, year and a half, two years, and I'm getting inundated with all these emails. So I start finally reading them. And a lot of them are really cool stories. They want to be in anonymity. Hey, Rob, look, I don't want to be on your show. Because, you know, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to be judged. So I just put this on the back burner. So I started putting out videos on these stories with, of course, you know, I would get back with the people who contacted me. Say, look, I'm going to do a video on this. Do you care? So they said, yeah, I don't care. Just don't use my name. So I started doing that. And that took off pretty well. So I said, you know. I've got a lot of this information now, a lot of data, a lot of cool stories, some scary, some uplifting, some sad, and some that just make sense. And, and any, a lot of the stories anybody would love to read. So I started putting the book together. And I have to tell you, it's not a copy and paste job. You know, some of the stories that I've received were maybe 90 words long. But the thing about the book that I put out, it always stays to what the crux of the story is. And then, sure, then I would call the person back. Was it a, a rainy? Was it was it raining? Was it sunny? So give me some more descriptions so I could put and shape something. And I put out the video. So I said, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together true encounter stories and put a book out on all these experiences. And so I started, and they're really, dude, when I had my encounter, and really the reason why I started my channel, and really the basis for this book was I had nowhere to go. I mean, you know the story. I went for about 18 months, had nowhere to go. Then I finally got in touch with you, of course, which I always give you the highest of respect, because you're the first guy that told me I wasn't going crazy. I saw something in the woods, probably a Bigfoot. The demonic transformation was something that, yeah, you, you kind of had an idea, but you thought it was an, 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 certainly an encounter. And I remember you told me, boy, Rob, I wish your first encounter wasn't so traumatic and so nuts because Bigfoot isn't really all about that. So that was five years ago. And I realized today that Bigfoot is not a demon, right? <clears throat> However, I remember being lost and alone, and I remember that many people in the world today, they have nowhere to go to tell their story, and many people don't want to be on a live show. They don't even want their voice with their face hidden. So I started putting these together because I think it serves as therapy for people much like it did for me. So really the book is not about fortune. It's not about fame. It's about those people that suffer today from PTSD, traumatic experiences, and just want to be heard, and they want to hear their story be told. So for them, and it's actually in the acknowledgments of the book, and I dedicate the book to all those that sent me in their stories so I could put them out for them. And I got to tell you, more than anything for me, it's satisfying for me, it's gratifying. If I make a dollar, I make a dollar. The point for me, and I even stress this on my shows, is look, I know where you've been. 
and I want you to feel that you're not alone. So the book is really about for people with these encounters to not feel alone. And that's what I'm all about. And I think you pretty much know that. And I think it comes off that way on my YouTube channel with my interviews and the people I discuss and talk with. So that for me is very gratifying. And I'm very proud of the book. Uh, it was published this past Sunday on, on Amazon. Bigfoot, Michigan Rob presents True Cryptid Encounters, book one. Book two will probably be out in the description below. So if you guys want it, you'll be able yeah. to just go check, yeah. click on that link, go on over there. And this yep. is, again, this is a cool thing because it's not like some of these stories that every damn channel out there is regurgitating the same stories and they just narrate their version of it, some of them poorly. These are stories that you otherwise wouldn't get to hear. And, you know, and the sad thing is I probably could have been doing books like this for quite a while now because yeah. all the time I'm getting people that want to tell me about something that happened to them, get my two cents worth on it and stuff. And it's like, well, wow, that was really a pretty freaky encounter. You know, you yeah. want to come on the show and talk about it? Oh, hell no. Can't get them to come on the show. They don't want their name used. You know, they don't want the ridicule, whatever. I mean, I've had a couple of people on my Bigfoot research team that don't want to be on camera or have their names known. And they're on a friggin' yeah. Bigfoot research team. So imagine yes. what it's like for just Joe Casual that sees something yeah. like this. And they're like, <laughs> I need to talk to somebody about this, but I'm not yeah. going to talk to the whole world about it. Yeah, and, and that's a fantastic thing about this book is, like you just said, all these stories, there's 45 of them, and they are Joe Casual. There are people that had a one-time encounter and a one-time experience. Now, with that being said, there's a handful of people that, that spoke with me that said, yeah, they are researchers. They know about Bigfoot. They know about Dogman. They know about other cryptids that are out there, and they actually look for them. But the stories that I've gotten are, the, are, are unique to them and unique to me, and it's unique to the, to the listener, never been told. And I feel proud of the fact that people, and it's because of the show that I do, Duke, they reach out to me via email. They're either a subscriber to the channel or they contacted me via the email. And and I, I'm proud that, you know, they, they respect and trust that I would do them justice. And again, in anonymity. Again, Duke, I've asked all these people to be on the show. And, you know, they're like, Rob, you know what? No, we don't want fortune. We don't want fame. We don't want the 15 minutes. If my name is Joe Smith, make it, you know, John Bland, right? Just, I don't want my name even known, you know? Yeah, my actual name is Joe Schmo from Kokomo. Yeah. But, you, you know, know the, uh, the, the other thing that comes up, though, is that sometimes these people, their encounter is so traumatic, it's hard for them to even tell the story once to one person. Yes. And that's bad enough. And they just don't want to tell the story again because every time no. they try and tell the story, they have to relive it. And glutton yeah. for punishment like you and me that end up telling our story a few dozen times. Yeah. Well, then after the 30th or 40th time, it's not quite as bad. <laughs> yeah, you know, and really quickly, I'll, I'll ask, I'll, I'll, uh, I resonate with that. But it's a lot of these um, emails that I've read that have been sent to me. I'm like, oh, my Lord, I have to really restructure this conversation. I have the crux of the story. I got the encounter. I get what happened. But, boy, they're, like, all over the place. So <laughs> I did have to take time, though, to kind of put it into a semblance where, the, where you could communicate it, you know, in, in text. <laughs> but but go, so, so I did put a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's, again, it's not a copy and paste job at all. No. There's a lot of my creativity to help, you know. Explain the story and get it yes, out a little bit better. Because, exactly. yeah, yeah so, some people uh, will tell a story yeah. and they're they're not good at telling things in chronological no. order to start no. with. And then yeah. they're all freaking out and they keep flashing to different parts of the story and jumping back and forth. <laughs> yeah. and, oh, my God. So, so I had to go back so many times. Well, what month was this? What park was this? Where were you? If you don't mind telling me, was it raining? Was it mm -hmm. sunny? Were you on the water? Were you in the forest? Oh, I forgot to tell you, I was in Yada Yada State Park and it was snowing. <laughs> you know, so it, it's like, oh, that'd have been nice to know because now I'm trying to shape it 
together. So, yeah, so I had a, you know, I put a lot of time in this. But, you know, what you said earlier about, um, uh, um, what was the question? Would, would you, but, it, but anyways, yes, I told my story a thousand times. The first time I told my story, I was on Germans, you know, Wes's channel. And I, I was all over the place and crappy. I did a crappy interview. And, but I, I got it out and I was happy with it just because I had I enunciated, I verbalized it to the to the world. But I tell you what, dude, the first several interviews I went on, I would tear up and, and cry and look like a, like a baby. And I was so embarrassed many times, many, many times, Duke. I was embarrassed and I cried literally. And sometimes, then I got better, then it would just be tears. And then I finally got it together after about 20 interviews I did. I did so many. I've, I've, again, I've told my story a million times. Today I can do it and get, and get through it. But even two weeks ago, I told my encounter. The thing that always hits me the most, Duke, is, is the death of Cindy. That's the thing that still strikes me. And it's not because of the encounter. It's because the mother has never told me. The real right yeah. that strikes me and that hits my heart that's sad yes you know with my uh encounter i'd like to point out to everybody out there that sitting on your encounter is not going to make it better and it's not going to make it go away because it was over 30 years from the time i had my first encounter before i told that story to anybody and I freaked the hell out. And it took me like a dozen times of telling this story before it got any easier to tell the story. And what actually helped me a lot is that I had somebody that was willing to jump in and try and do an actual uh, recreation of what the critter looked like, like Sibylla yeah. Irwin does. And this, yeah. this is a different person. Uh, uh, but he actually got the a final version of it that was pretty close to what I saw. And I could tell as it was getting closer because every time he'd send me the new version, I'd look at it and I would like hyperventilate and have to go out on the porch and freak out for about 10 minutes before yeah. I could even come back and look at it again. And every time he did the upgrades on it, the reaction got worse and worse and worse until it was like, well, yeah, that's fine. That's close enough. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to yeah. see exactly perfectly what it looked like. But yeah. then having that out there for several you know, years at this point, yeah. I see that face over and over and over and over and over yes. to the point where it isn't really terrifying anymore. It doesn't shock me anymore. I just yeah. like want to punch him really bad. But, you know, <clears throat> uh, it, it it wears off eventually is what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's not because you're stuffing it, ignoring it. It's because you're no. facing it and doing something with it. Oh, that, that's such a great point because I keep – I've been working with Sibylla Irwin, by the way, and she's a fantastic artist. And I talked to her, she goes, well, I'm going to do a sketch. I sketched Bigfoot, and I seen some of her work. I said, Sibylla, those are not sketches. Those are absolute beautiful renditions. Yeah, it's like fine art. Fine art. And I met her um, last year in Alabama, and I we got together, and, and we're – Chit chatting, and, and she and I told her about my encounter, and she says she wanted to do the sketches. And what you just made mention of really resonates for me because I've told my encounter story a thousand times, and everybody knows there was a Down syndrome looking humanoid standing from the wood line from at the edge of the water, then it turned into what looks like a demon. So, and that's always how I explain it, and that's how. I, I will I will not refrain from that. So finally, I've been working with her, and she's such a sweetheart. So yeah, I'll get back with you for, with more because we've been working on this for quite some time. We finally have the first sketch almost completed of the humanoid-looking Down syndrome-looking um, Bigfoot. Yeah. Before or, he sonic blast you and starts looking before, like a demon. Before the sonic blast, and I gotta tell you, dude. She is so fantastic. It's I told her this is like ninety three percent what I saw, mm -hmm. really, and and it's great for me because oh she'll I, dude she'll get it up to a hundred percent she will and, 
and it was great for me is now when I tell the story, now I I can show people down the, the road picture. this is going to happen. Yes. So I told Sybilla ninety three percent, and like you just said, Duke, she goes, uh uh-uh, uh, Rob, uh uh-uh. uh, what's wrong? I want it one hundred percent before I present this. So we are currently finishing that up, and again, I've been with her i always call her every day i'm sorry i'll call you when i have a chance we gotta get this done because i've worked with her i've worked with her three times on this and of all three sessions i've had with sibylla Irwin, we've gone over two and a half hours all three times to get it to 90 percent, and we're not quite done and then after this of course we 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 um we tackle the metamorphosis the demonic theme that I've seen. So I'm going to have both renditions. And for me personally, looking at this first one already, Duke, it's like, wow, yeah, that is what I saw. Because as, you, as you're as you aware, and anybody listening, you can't, when you tell the story, you so badly want people to see what you saw. Because none yeah. of us get pictures, audio, video. Uh, and so with what she's done, for well, me. I, in my case, I, I didn't really want people so badly to see what I saw because it's freaking horrifying. And well, no, you'll you know, just have nightmares. Well, I tell you, mine was kind of nightmarish. I'll tell you, and I've heard your story many a time, and I I tend to agree with you as well. But Mr. Smiley, not cute. Yeah, Mr. Smiley. Yeah. <laughs> Not not someone I'm going to uh, you know have my daughter take out and date yeah. or anything like that. Uh, sure. All nine feet of him with his nice big shark like grin. No. Yeah. <laughs> big no, no. no. Thank you. <laughs> so so yeah. So when we tell these stories in the book or what I do on my channel, it's so gratifying though to have something come to life in front of your eyes. And it's not. And, and by the way, everybody. Sibylla is not AI. She is doing it freehand. Certainly, the Sheer computer helps. Talent. She's, she's got so much talent, and and I and hopefully she's going to watch here today on Sunday. You know, Love right, Sibylla, and uh, fantastic. Damn it, Rob, film. you're right. She's so freaking awesome. I'm having her on my show next. There you go. So, so she can just advertise for herself, and we can quit talking about how amazingly talented, adorable, fun, and smart that she is. Yeah. And and I won't even let it leak out that I'm hoping yeah, to have uh, her on the inevitably course. finding Bigfoot team next spring in Nebraska. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not even going to make mention I'm going to have her on my show when we go through her rendition. We're not going to mention any of that. Let's not even mention any of that. Yeah. Sibylla, you know, Sibylla Irwin, come on. <laughs> she she covers some of the most sketchy encounters ever. <laughs> she is so sketchy, that woman. <laughs> That's a, that's an inside joke. It was one of her kids was giving her a hard time saying instead of calling it sketching encounters, it should be called sketchy encounters because these encounters are really weird and freaky. <laughs> yeah. And one last plug for Sibylla. She was the first person that tried to do artwork of Glag for Kevin oh. when that was going on. And Kevin told me behind the scenes that it was absolutely perfect. It looked exactly like young Glag. She went, you know, took a couple weeks on it, sending him rough drafts back and forth and got it just absolutely perfect. As far as he was nice. concerned, it was like taking a picture of him. Oh. Again, yeah, great woman. And yeah, that's fantastic. I I saw um, a little bit of that. Well, you showed me. So yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. But the other thing that's fantastic is BMR's awesome book. And do you have uh, happen to have a copy of that handy, BMR? You know what? It's so funny, Duke, because we're talking, we're recording this on a Thursday night. I ordered my books, books, a long time ago. I have yet to receive my copies. <laughs> this is and hilarious because I've heard from like a dozen people a dozen that have ordered people, it after you and have gotten dozen, them already. Duke, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you've heard this because. I'm getting pictures sent to me. Rob, love your book. It's a copy of my book. And I've yet to get it myself. I don't even know how thick it is. I go, well, how thick is it? You know, does it look good? Is the quality good? Oh, yes. You know, it's thick, all this and that. And then my niece, hey, listen, my niece, 
Today's Thursday. She bought it. She ordered it Tuesday. She got it today. And now what I'm getting is everybody wants an autographed copy. And I'm like, well, yeah, I, yeah, fine. You're getting it well before I am. I've had copies to send out to people, but, but yeah, so I, that's a big joke. It's like on Facebook, BMR's book. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, that's nice. People are really buying it and they're digging it. They're sharing it. I don't even know what it looks like. I know what it looks like, but I don't have the physical copy for God's sakes. I wrote the damn thing and I don't have a copy of yeah. it. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of somebody that wrote a vampire story once and in their computer fried. Yeah, just right. Copy yeah, who the hell is that guy? It's like, come on. <laughs> no, but Duke, literally, how thick is it? Is is the spacing of is a is a you know how's the spacing between the the lines, the sentences? Oh yeah, everything's fantastic. Back of the book's fine. The cover's great. Everything's great. I'm like, great. So I'm supposed to get it tomorrow at ten o'clock at night. Right. <laughs> And then, I, yeah, so my first big <coughs> review, I'm going on Dave Scott on Monday. Space Out Radio. won't show up until after you're on. Yeah, Space. you know, I want to copy the book. But I got <laughs> I got to read my book before I, get, I have to prepare for that show, right? <laughs> and it's funny, too, dude. <laughs> you spend the time writing a book. I got 45 encounter stories. And for the life of me, when you go through this process, I could tell you what any of them are all about, you know? I mean, I, I, it's just because you're so intense and, and you just don't read it. When you write a book, you don't read it. You edit when you write, right? right. I mean, that's how I did it. I'm a novice. I don't know. My next one will be different. It's like, yeah, so someone says, hey, Robert, you like that Thunder Mountain Bigfoot. I like that one. I go, which one's that? Well, it's chapter 13. I'm like, okay, I got to find it when I get the book. Because I don't have the book yet. I don't yeah, even yeah. know what my own book looks like. Right. <laughs> I know what it looks like, but I want that physical copy. When I get the physical copy, then it will be gratified, and and uh, then I'll then I'll be able to celebrate a little bit. But you'll yeah, be like, yes, that. this actually happened. I've got a real copy of the book to prove it. Yeah, it's not imaginary. It I had this guy, at Eric, Eric from Paranormal Highway, was showing my book to his fans on his channel the other day, and I happened to tune in, and he's flaunting my copy of my book to his audience. I happen to catch it. I'm like, oh, my God, he's already got the book. But you don't. <laughs> yeah, the author's don't. the last person on earth that gets a copy of his own book. Apparently, that's a new well, The problem is I, I ordered, like, uh, and, yeah, I'm trying to get, uh, I think I probably placed two in here. I ordered two. I bought two retail, and then I placed another order for, like, 25 at wholesale just to have them to give out. So I'm thinking, because when you order the books, I guess, with Amazon, it's not like they make a thousand of them because this guy might not sell one, right? So I think they print them as you purchase them. So it takes a few extra days. But I looked on the computer, Duke. My book is finally being shipped from Maryland. Of all horrible uh, places. Yeah. You know, Amazon drivers coming from Maryland. Like, yeah, I don't believe that. But, yeah, it's it's right on the map. I looked it up. Who knows, man? Well, I'm Who so knows? far away from Maryland. If I ordered one, it probably wouldn't show up here until next year. Now, if you ordered one today, you'd probably get it by Sunday. <laughs> or the debut of this show. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd still be sitting there without one going, Yeah, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> well, great. Thanks. I don't get no respect. No respect yeah, at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's no name authors. I'm on the back. You know, I'm the. They're not making no money from me. I'm paying two bucks wholesale for the book. Probably. I don't even know what I have to pay. But yeah. But anyway, man. It's. Uh, I, I. I really. Uh, again, for me, it was rewarding because telling other people's stories is what I like to do, and and for them to um, have their their experiences brought forward. Without ridicule, without judgment, in anonymity. That's what I'm all about. I think you know that about me anyway. And uh, so I'm, yeah. I'm proud of it. I'm really happy with it. Well, it sounds like everybody that's got a copy of it is loving it. So that's all, always a good sign right there. They're not going, this is a piece of crap. It's as thin as yeah. toilet paper. Yeah, it's this that print that's an inch high. There's only yeah. like two sentences. Yeah, in. you know, oh my God. 
does this really happen? This didn't happen. You know, come on. Big no, in addition, to, in addition to what I can only guess, and I'm pretty much certain are probably really cool, high-quality stories because, hey, you put some of them out on your channel anyway. Yeah. Uh, the artwork on it is really stellar. Let's share oh, yeah. the artwork. There it is. How cool yeah. is that? That is uh, cool. BMR yeah. Presents. And yeah. then down at the bottom of the book, it's got... The name of whoever it was a ghost write writed this thing for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. ghost writer Rob Carnoffel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever that dork is. <laughs> whoever that dork is. Yeah, yeah. BMR got that dork to ghost write the whole damn the book ghost for. Her. That way, if if it sucks, I could you know change. That Blame it on out. him. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. guy sucked. I'll go. I'm gonna, I'll go I'm gonna Rob, do the next book all by myself. I'll go to Rob Carr. Rob Carr will be the next <laughs> book. You know. But you know, and, and and you did mention the, the the cover, and I have to give props to Jason McLean. He did the cover, and everybody, whoever buys it, or if you look it up and check it out, the cover, the artwork is not AI. It's is again another great artist because you know I was thinking about Sibylla doing it, but Jason I've known for a long time, as you know, uh, with text, and he's an artist himself. He did the cover uh, from hand. He did the color. He did the uh, dog man and the uh, the uh, big the bigfoot on it. He did. Uh, I think I he had off to Jason, and he did it's, help it's me. It's got with the, really good eye catching colors. Yeah, and it's got this cool pulp art vibe to it. Yeah, like, like an old yeah. Conan magazine or something. You know, like, dude, look at that cool and, groovy monster. And, he, yeah. and his idea behind the cover. And let me tell you, he put some thought in this because. He wanted the, the the creatures on the cover to come out like they're coming out of a portal or coming out from the forest. Like they just weren't just sitting there hanging out. Yeah. He wanted to give that element of another dimension. Because we know Duke, I mean, whether, whether what whatever you believe in, dimensions, it just it just it attracts the view. It's eye popping for somebody. Because you know, I can tell you. I got a million books, and me, I'm a, I'm gullible. If I, if I see a cool book cover, and I read the back, I buy it without looking inside it, because I'm into I I fall for good marketing and good art, and if you have a good back cover, and it sounds intriguing, I usually buy it. Now, does that mean I read it? No, but you know that's that's just. But me. it was good enough eye candy to get your attention in the first yes. place. Absolutely. And I had that happen to me back in the 70s. There was a series of books by this, you know, little known author, and all the artwork on them was really cool. Yeah. And so finally I got one. I read it and I was like, oh my God, the story's even better than the artwork. I'm going to get every book by this guy. So I got them all. And he was using the same artist to do all the artwork for all of his book covers. So then a few years later, here comes this really crappy Southern Fried rock and roll band that took every single book cover that he had and put it on one of their crappy albums. And I went, oh, well, this band must be cool. They're using the same artwork. Obviously, they're down with this Dark Knight sorcerer character. Dark Knight right? You know, and then I turn around yeah. and I'm like, is he flirting with the blaster every day? Shut the hell up. <laughs> Smash the, the thing, throw it on the ground. Uh, no, you guys suck. <laughs> for sure, man. But I, I tell you what, though, yeah, we're a sucker born for all that every day, and uh, <laughs> absolutely, I, I tell you, I, I've always been like that, though. I'm attracted. I'll buy a magazine back when magazines were not nothing but advertisements. I'd buy a cool looking magazine cover, you know, yeah. especially back like Rolling Stone magazine. I always had cool art covers of all the rock bands, and yeah, you go now, to, and I would buy them and read up on the rock bands. And they, they had great legitimate articles. Today, <clears throat> excuse me, I saw a Rolling Stone magazine at the bookstore. I was like, wow, this looks sweet. Cool cover. Dude, no kidding, man. I look inside it. There's maybe two articles, and the rest is advertising vacuum cleaners. They're, they're advertising lawn services. They're advertising Tidy Bowl, Tide. Oh. I'm like, are you kidding me? Where's I the followed out on that now? one back in like the 90s when all my friends are going, it's turned into a fashion magazine. It has nothing to do with music anymore. Yeah, it's well, just a yeah. stupid fashion magazine. And now it's just like, yeah. it's an everything. It's an advertisement magazine with a yeah. couple articles in it. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, and um, I don't want to belabor the point about magazines. Even my mom was talking to my mom. She used to get that, that magazine. My dad would always buy her Woman's World, right? I guess that's, that was her thing. And she goes, Rob, I got to tell you, I don't buy that magazine for the last 10 years. All it is is good housekeeping advertisements. I'm like, yeah, that's the way it is today. You can't pick up anything good to read today. You know, they don't sell newspapers. I love the newspaper. I can get the Sunday paper, but I like Monday through Friday paper to read. Now today's mainstream media, eh, you know, blow it off. However, I used to enjoy that. And today it's like they, they charge you a dollar to read the newspaper online. Yeah. You know, now, so. They didn't say anything that was worth hearing when it was cheaper. Definitely not paying that now. No, hell no. When I was a kid, it was 35 cents because I was a sports guy and I'd buy it for the sports page until I got older. 35 cents. Now they don't even sell it. Yeah. So. Yeah, when I was a kid, you could buy a nice, gorgeous, full-color Marvel comic book for 20 cents. Oh, absolutely. I remember that, man. I got, um, God, this is for another sh- another show. Spider-Man, uh, Captain America, the X-Men. Yeah, I bought all those comics as a kid growing up. The Hulk. Yeah. And some was with Stan Lee. And then DC Comics had, I think, Superman. My favorite, though, was Stan Lee. I liked his comics. And I think yeah. he was the creator of Spider-Man, I believe. Yeah, he was. And 150 other Marvel characters. Yeah. I guess absolutely. I came, he came up with most of the main characters of the roster at Marvel Comics. One one guy invented all of them. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> like mind boggling. Super creative dude. And he had a stable of really good artists and uh creative talented uh you know, authors working with him too that were doing all the scripting. And, and a lot of that stuff was, you know, <laughs> He would do the scripting for it too, you know. <laughs> oh, I oh, can write I'm this sure. story for this twenty-page oh, yeah. comic. And oh, this I'm afternoon, sure, yeah. man, done there. Make oh. make art. <laughs> I, you know, I, oh, I'm sure, I, I'm sure he did, you know, because if you're into what you do, you want to do everything. And I tell you, with the book, you can't do everything, right? I wanted to be this, that, no. and the other. I even tried to do my own cover, and I'm like, nah, this just ain't working. <laughs> You know, I, I was working on a book one time, and I, I had an argument with a typesetter, and it turned into a slugfest with a couple of maces covered in ink. So you always got to be careful how far you try and push the control on anything. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I learned this, but I've learned this long ago, delegation. The people that delegate the best are usually the guys that are better off. Yeah. Well, delegating authority is definitely a skill, and part of the problem is you have to have people that'll work with you that actually will do something because <laughs> sometimes they're like oh yeah i volunteer i'll do this and they never do anything no yeah no and they got and, and another thing is too they have to have your vision you can delegate take it out of garbage to somebody but if you're going to delegate hey listen i want this done because this is important you want to be on the same page as well and, and trust them just like going back the bigfoot when I had my encounter, dude, I delegated for six months when I owned my bar. I told the man, here are the keys, brother. Don't rip me off. Take care of the business. And sure enough, he didn't rip me off. And six months when I went back to work, everything was still running pretty smoothly. The best thing is that I was, the business, the business was still afloat and, and they understood and that's the key to anything in life. Is that Whether when they broke to you the bad news that your bar is actually haunted? You, they After that, they did. <laughs> they thought that I was going to fire them because, you know, <laughs> the bar was haunted. And then when I laid oh, the yeah, story Oh, yeah, I six months ago, and then I leave yeah, for six and months. And then I laid the, the bar all haunted. Yeah. What the hell were you doing in here? <laughs> yeah. I laid a story, and I see this Bigfoot creature turn into a demon. That's why I took off six months. Killed my girlfriend. <laughs> and here you guys are getting yeah. ghosts in the bar and getting the place all haunted. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, it was cool. <laughs> you know what they did, though, Duke? I don't think I ever told this story. Um, they had, you know, they had set up a jar and they, they typed something on a computer with something to, hey, 
have you had a strange encounter with ghosts, demons, Bigfoot, or something else, UFOs? So they, they taped it on this jar, and they said, hey, leave a comment and write it and just put it in here. We'll read it. Do you know, you guys, that's what these people that work for me did. That's how much they love me. They did this, and now it was all in the air. I heard the, their ghost stories. I heard my Bigfoot counter. And do you know, dude, in about a month, there was about 17 or 18 tags that someone left. And we were going through one night after work and reading these things about people that had encounters with a cryptid, a.k.a. a Bigfoot mostly, a ghost, a demon. And it was just like, you know, Duke, and I just, right then and there, and I didn't have my channel or nothing. I was still the bar guy. And I started, my head started turning. You know, wow, there's so many people out there that have this stuff repressed. I got 17, like, little four-by-four four cars put in a, a jar that we made up in the bar. And, like, 17 people responded. And, Duke, if they responded, they weren't making nothing up. Maybe a couple were. Let's, let's, we, we have to. We have to consider that. But no, they just wanted to get that off their chest, man. And that gave me this whole idea about people, they need to be heard, right? Well before the channel, well before the book, well before Rob was Bigfoot Mystery Rob, my head started spinning and thinking way back then. Well, I'll tell you what, one thing that prompts people in this direction, too, of course, is having their own experience. Yeah. Because it never occurs to you that even if you think maybe these things are real, yeah, you don't realize what the impact is when you actually see one. You know, and a lot of people are on the page that these things aren't real. So when somebody else sees one, they ridicule, ha ha, you're crazy. Yeah. Quit making up your silly stories and stuff like that. And there is no place to go with it. Right. And especially until recently, now there's channels you can go to, there's people you can talk to, there's group, groups on, uh, you know, uh, some of these platforms that will talk about cryptids and stuff, and a lot of people, you know, have their own experiences. I did a poll on my YouTube channel and on my, one of my groups, and it came out about the same, that over 80% of the people that pay attention to my show have had a cryptid encounter. Yeah. And part of the reason they flock to this is because, like, okay, well, here's a place where I can talk about what happened to me. Nobody's going to ridicule me. Nobody's going to give me a hard time because they've all had it happen to them, too. Yeah, right. But, I mean, until recently, I, there wasn't anything like this. Like, if, yeah. you, if you're in the military and you got PTSD, you can go to a group for PTSD. Yes. There's other people there that have PTSD. Maybe they were in the same part of the military as you. They could kind of relate. You know, everybody can talk about all the horrible things that happened to them. Helps get it off your chest. Yeah. Alcoholics Anonymous, another good example. Yeah. Everybody's got a bad issue. And the only way that they can get over it is to actually, you know, be honest about it, talk about it, get it off their chest, analyze why it is that they're doing the things they're doing, yeah. and hopefully they can get their act together. But there isn't a Cryptids Anonymous. You know, there's not a cryptids anonymous. And, you know, what you just made mention just resonates with me. And, and this is nothing to do with cryptids, everybody listening. I owned a bar for 13 years. And people like me, I'm personable. I listen to their stories. A whole, there's so many stories, Duke, I mean, from A to Z and everything in between. And you talk about alcohol anonymous. There was a point as a bar owner, I started feeling a little bit guilty because... I knew these people's stories so well. I knew who was divorcing who, who was cheating on who. I knew that Joe Blow blew his entire paycheck every Friday in my bar with a family at home. And I started getting a very bad a, a conscience about me personally ruining people's lives. And then I had a complex. And then I, got, I talked to some people, Rob, you're not forcing them in the front door. You have a business to run, and that's their choice. Everyone has a choice. So, yeah, I agree. I, I got over that. And then some of the, my customers I spoke with were having problems, and I knew this, and I sought them out. And I took a person to their first Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, and I did this. I did this. I drove them. 
I've never been to one. I'm not an alcoholic or anything, drug addict or anything like that. But I knew people in my, that visited my bar were both, right? Yeah. Took them his first meeting, Duke. And I got to tell you, man, guy never went to one. I knew he was bad off. It was such a welcoming feeling that these people at these meetings gave to this guy. And this guy, he laid it on a table and he must have balled for 20, 30 minutes and they just listened to him. I do choked up. I felt good that I thought I was helping him. And I guess I did because he never came back in the bar. Three months later, he came in 90 days sober and thanked me for it. And, and to this day, he, Rob, you saved my life and my family. And he brought his wife in. She hugged me. She kissed me. So how does this relate to cryptids? This is how it relates to what I do on my channel and with the book. To me, I'm all about people, man. And that touched me. I'll never forget that. So that's what I'm trying to hope to do with my channel, with my book and everything else is because people do need, they need love. They need support when everyone else wants to turn a cold shoulder. Yeah. Totally agree with you on that one. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sad that I, I know I realize now that it's changing. There's more and more people yeah. that are taking this seriously and you can actually bring it out in public and, yeah. That silly finding Bigfoot show had something to do with making a general water cooler talk. But right. it was still years of that where everybody's like, oh, Bigfoot, ha, 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 that's a joke. Yeah. And, you know, at this point, there's like more more of the American public believes that Bigfoot is real than actually believes anything Hillary Clinton says as a good example. Right. <laughs> it's a small victory. We'll take it wherever we can. Sure. Yeah, it's absolutely. Small, but yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I I hear you there. I I hear you. I I, I want to say something, but I'm not. But yeah, I, I we are on the same page with that one, man. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get our consided or anything, so we'll just put that one down right. Yeah, there. Ex you know we're media personalities for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah, can't say anything bad about her. Yeah, you know you can't. No, she's because she's so wonderful. She's the best. Oh my God. <laughs> we love you. Please don't kill us. Yeah, yeah please, please don't. <laughs> We're already on her radar anyway. You yeah, know that. No shit. We're on everybody's shit list. Come on, are you serious? Yeah. No. Everybody's like, oh God, it's those cockroaches again. Oh Somebody God. gonna get rid of them eventually. Who's this running world around telling people that who's World Bigfoot time. Central, World Bigfoot Radio? <laughs> who's this peon Bigfoot BMR guy? Wrote a book now. We had both these jerks are running around telling people the truth all the time. It's getting really irritating. Oh my lord! <laughs> you know, who are these palookas? Knock it out, jabronis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a I, couple yeah. of rubes. <laughs> and that's and I tell you what though, that's exactly what's going on. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know nothing. I see nothing. I say nothing. <laughs> you know, here's the thing though, and a little. Uh, and for all you people out there listening, if you do happen to buy the book, there are several state parks and national forests that I make mention of by their actual name and how some of the administrators have paid off people to not mention their encounter. So I made that public in this book. Now, I don't know what type of backlash I might get, but I named them. I didn't say... Michigan State Park. I didn't make it Detroit State Park. It was the actual name of the park in the book from the people that told me. I told the stories exactly how they were told to me. So I'm no, I'm interested in seeing how many people, administrators of some of these national parks, call me out and say, "Why did you do that?" But hey, it's copywritten. It's my words. Well, eh, whatever. I'm not yeah, going to make they a million got dollars. Deniability. There's yeah. a couple channels out there, and one of them in particular, he seems to have pretty good information because yeah. he's come up with a couple stories that actually I got one of the stories he came out with the day before he came out with it. Yeah. And I had a couple more details that he didn't have, but he had the sto story pretty solid. So, like, there's some actual insiders that are leaking information to this <laughs> guy, and he likes to cover lots of stories about 
park rangers actually saw this, but they're not allowed to talk about it. Yeah, oh, yeah. now this one retired and doesn't give a crap anymore. Yeah. And here's what he has to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's although, both ends, too. It's not just the, you know, I mean, like, oh, they're the bad guys because they're hiding it. Well, yeah. they want to have a job, too. They do. Yeah. No, and they may not like that they can't talk about any of this stuff. But then again, when they retire, then they go to this other channel and they spill the beans and it goes. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> oh, yeah. And, and I, I, I do have to say this, too, because. I don't really watch a lot of people's channels, but I, I'm on YouTube a lot and I do look up, you know, Bigfoot. I look all of this stuff up. I will have to say this, though. When I see one that says Park Ranger Encounter declassified i watch it now whether it's sure or not who knows duke you know that but i always like to hear from the source right a man that makes his living living in the forest has got to have some facts right i mean come on we're not naive no well in some of the stories you get too i mean i heard this one story recently where they're talking about an event that happened i'm not going to tell the whole story too long but there's this event that happened in yellowstone and when they were describing, the witness was describing where him and his son were standing while they were watching this and what the area below them looked like, yeah. I have absolutely been there. He was oh, giving wow. a great description of it. I was in that field where he was describing that he saw a Bigfoot. <laughs> That's how good his description was. For yeah. sure, it was the same exact spot. So that just made like the hair on the back of my neck stand up like, oh, my God. I almost got mowed down by a buffalo in that same field where he saw a field full of buffalo and a Bigfoot run right through the middle. (laughs) (laughs) So that's, you know, know, that's really cool when something like that happens. But I mean, some of these stories, you can, you can kind of tell by how the wording is, how the story's put together. Yeah. Is this a real story or is it something they just fabricated? Yeah. And, you know, I hate to tell you guys, there's some channels out there that's like 90% everything they put out is bull. You know the rest. Yeah, when we know the rest, as Paul Harvey was saying, you know the rest of the story. Yeah, it's ching, ching, ching. I make money by telling scary Bigfoot stories, so I'm going to make up more. Yeah, and, you know, and people do it, and I get it, and hey, whatever. But I will say this. I got this from people's mouths. Now, did I vet? Now, I will say this, the disclaimer. Did I go out and vet every single story I got? No, but I will tell you this. I damn well looked up. The parks that they mentioned it, I looked up certain things, so I was somewhat in the the area. But I always tell people this. Because of what happened to me, I'm going to believe your story and give you the benefit of the doubt because I certainly don't want to judge or ridicule anybody. Because if you heard my story for the first time, like many people did, really, Rob, you had the really... And that's the only thing that burns me to, to this day is you didn't see something that I saw. So, me, you tell me something, I'm going to take it, I'm going to roll with it. And uh, and that's just the way it goes. And yeah, I'll, I'll, look up a, I'll look up some information and I take it from there because who we weren't walking in these people's shoes, Duke. And that's how I was in the very beginning. That my encounter was so incredible that I didn't tell no one for fear of telling people, frankly, call me full of ass, right? Full of crap. So actually, there's I, way worse things than that than that that can happen. Um, I can give you guys an example. Someone gets ridiculed, they get called a liar. Well, that hurts your feelings, but yeah, so what? Yeah, so what if you just internalize this and you never talk to anybody about it and it yeah. drives you completely insane? Yes. And oh. there's examples of that. Stark Weather mm. was a biggest oh, yeah. murder in oh, the history of yeah. Nebraska. He told the story when he was in jail that one of the reasons that he went so cuckoo is because how badly he was tortured when he was a kid and apparently something would come up to the window of his house shortly before dawn every day look in his window yeah and then utter a mournful cry and walk away and he didn't know what this thing was he said it kind of looked like a bear but it had breasts and it had like a pointed head and it walked on its hind legs 
Well, interesting side note here, and here's the plug for inevitably finding Bigfoot. He actually lived about two blocks away from the area that we went to outside of Lincoln, Nebraska, and did, and filmed the show. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hmm. You froze up, buddy. It looks like it, Duke. I just noticed. I know we could get this obligatory Rob freezes up. It has yeah, to happen yeah. on every single show. We could and, not connect these to selected cameras. Try something else. Well, you know, I think we're getting close to the end anyway, Duke. Can you still at least hear me? Oh, yeah. I can. We could still hear you. It's just that you're yeah. doing this incredible thing with, you know, like ventriloquism right yeah, now. With your lips you up. know. <laughs> it Man, you're the best be- at that. It would not be BMR without the ventriloquist ending to a show, you know? <laughs> yeah, this is like almost proverbial. Every single show Rob oh, does, he's got to freeze up is. at some point. So everybody out there, subscribe to Bigfoot Mystery Rob. And when this happens, please don't leave the channel because I'm still there. <laughs> he's still there. And he always comes back, too. Yeah, and then he's should. got his stories that he just flat out has like pre-recorded. So yeah. that doesn't happen during those. And no, those are just not. like the ones that he's got in his book, which yep. is freaking awesome. Thank you. And you Duke. totally want a copy of it. You want it so bad. <laughs> you cannot wait until Christmas or your birthday or yeah. anything. You've got to take that remaining money that's in your pocket right now. <laughs> yeah, there you and go. go. Spend it. Spend it. Spend it. Spend it. Spend it. <laughs> Buy BMR's book. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's not that much. It's twelve ninety nine on Amazon. Nine ninety nine on Kindle. Well, twelve ninety nine for God's sakes. That's like each story is only costing you a quarter. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, a quarter right. of story. Where are you going to get a great yeah. uh, cryptid story for only twenty five cents? You what is this? Even, back to the nineteen seventies again? For God's sake! If you put a quarter in a gumball machine, it won't even fit. You no, know, it, it, it'll take the money. They want another two dimes, thirty five, <laughs> forty five cents. And if it does fit, it'll just put out a wrapper that might have had a gumball in it at some point. It'll but it's put empty out a, now. That's it'll all give you, It'll give you a dumb little spider rubber ring. <laughs> remember those? I can't believe you remember those. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, I oh, yeah. Those those gumball machines have lots of interesting things in them. Yeah. And that's a, t- that's a story for another day, right? Tiny rubber brass knuckles. Okay. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, Duke, so much, man. I enjoyed it. Th- thanks for show. being on the show, and, and uh, everybody, go check the link in, in the description that will provided the way for you to go get BMR's book all of your own, so you can hug it, kiss it, love it, put it yeah. underneath your pillow, absorb there it you while go. you're sleeping, read it when you're out camping, so you can be <laughs> extra terrified. There you go. Yes. If your regular camping trip isn't scary enough, read BMR's book. That'll help. <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah all right bmr thanks for coming on the show again all you guys yeah. out there you know the drill no uh, poking dog man with sticks no punting puck wedgies or flipping off mountain giants and especially do not hug any wookie when the moon hangs high on the breast of the lake and the bite of the wind is like a slap in the face a legend of horror lurks in the haze. It's Bigfoot. A giant of a creature, all covered with hair, as tall as a timber and strong as a bear. Y'all better not go walking out there with Bigfoot. Feet tall, cold.
Bigfoot. From the tales of the traitors and trappers to the image on Indian walls. From the bare pole mountains of Montana to the signs of the great Shastas. From the flatheads to Blackfeet and the Shoshones. He must have seen them all. And when the sun goes down in the northwest woods, if you listen, you can hear him call. Bigfoot's 